What's up, Twitch and YouTube? It's MurphyD55 coming to you with another episode of The Northern. This is episode 17, and I've got my guy Big Kep over here ready to talk about all things NFL Draft. We're going to be uh, doing a little recap of some of the crazier moves that happened, some of the more surprising things, talking about the winners and losers uh, of the draft, and then giving a breakdown of, uh, of how our teams did uh, and a little hometown breakdown. Uh, as well we might even we might even uh, talk about some tmz-esque stuff at the end if we have a little bit of time but um appreciate you guys coming through appreciate you coming through kept making time to be on the pod man of course man anytime anytime you anytime you ask i'm there man you're one of the one of the one of those dudes that i'd i'd i would drop anything for so i don't I, know if you knew that or not but now you know i, um, I do want to i do want to point out though for being a canadian and not knowing a damn thing about hockey you sure didn't have a yeah. lot of hockey hats I do. It's you know what I have. Uh, it's my family curse. We have massive heads in my on my mom's side specifically. We all have massive heads. And there's uh like I looked on the new era site. There's only like out of the 40 different types of hats. There's maybe three of them that fit my head. And uh, for some reason, these retro hockey hats that I found at some store in uh in the distillery district of Toronto fit my head perfectly. So so I it's, I'm kind of like strapped. I can't wear any Raptors hats. Most Jays hats don't fit comfortably anymore. Uh, so I, I'm stuck wearing hockey stuff, even though I have no idea. Like, is this the Kansas City Chiefs? I have no who, clue who, what's on my head right now. I, that's I Calgary. Gotta, the Calgary Flames. Jerome McGinley. Yes, that's right. Jerome McGinley. I don't know if he's still in the league or not. It's been about 20 years yes. since I've watched the game. He was good. Yeah, he was good. He was good. And honestly, you know, it, it's crazy in Toronto. Um, game. Damn, was Game Seven last night? Yeah, they what, lost I, overtime. Who did the Leafs? I didn't even know that. Like, I literally live in Toronto. I didn't even know the Leafs played. Like, I knew they played, and I totally forgot about it. So the Leafs are done. They got beat by Boston again, which is like a, a recurring nightmare for Leafs fans uh, to have so much talent and a, and a guy who almost scored 70 goals and then have like two of your best players sit out for chunks of the series too is wild. Um, the Luch just canceled me for that comment. Yeah, yeah honestly, uh, Luch is a true hockey fan, but he's a Penguins fan. He's not even a Leaf fan, so we can't even really put him in the yeah, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But what well, about the Flyers? How are the Flyers doing? Are they uh, in the playoffs? Man, nah, they... they... They folded down the stretch. They had they were in a playoff spot for most of the year, and then something down the stretch happened. I don't I don't know what happened. I honestly don't know what happened. They played probably their worst hockey the last month of the season. Lost yeah. like eight straight. They had a chance to make it in the last couple last couple days, and they were they had to beat the Capitals, which yeah. they didn't do. And then they had some other they needed some other help, some other things to fall into place, but. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I, I honestly thought the Flyers were going to be fighting for the number one overall pick with how bad they were supposed to yeah. be. So for them to be as good as they were, um, you know, obviously there's no moral victories in my mind. But yeah. how young they are, <laughs> I, I think the, the future looks bright for them, depending on what they do coach wise, because the, 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 it's so mixed on people, people's opinion on John Tortorella. I love them. Yeah. So. I like him too. I remember him. He's coached the Rangers before. He's coached uh, a few other teams. He, he's a very opinionated guy, which is why I think a lot of people, a lot of people who watch hockey are used to the the generic interviews where guys don't actually say anything, whereas Tortorella is very outspoken. So I, I find at least as somebody, he's a great interview. He's interesting. I know, it comes, and, it, and it comes as a shock that I like him though, right? Yeah, I know, right? No, I'm, I'm not shocked at all. You definitely seem like a, a guy who would appreciate what he brings to the table, but he's, he's been doing it for a long time now. Like I, I, I remember he was probably just coming into the league as a coach when I had stopped watching hockey, but he's obviously been around for the last like 20 plus years now uh, as a veteran. So uh, yeah, I think uh, a city like Philly with a lot of opinionated people, he's probably a good fit down there. Um, and we won't even go into the Sixers talk. Uh, I, I, I have nothing to say about basketball this year. I didn't even watch <laughs> many games. My Raptors are in shambles, but at least, you know, finally moving on. Um, it, it's kind of tough to see a bunch of the Raptors best players now playing in a second round series and uh, meanwhile, we're sitting on the bench. We weren't even in contention for a play, for a, a play-in game spot. So, and you know that might be the case for the next couple of years too. So, uh, we'll we'll skip the the NBA talk for another time. But um, yeah, I wanted to get right into um, the NFL draft. Uh, we talked a lot about Caleb Williams about the top, uh, you know, four or five QBs in the draft. But I think we ended up seeing like six QBs drafted in the first round. Uh, I don't know if anybody got taken after Bo Nix. Um, uh, but uh, the biggest thing, I, the the first topic I wanted to get on was pick number eight, the Atlanta Falcons, you know, just signing Kirk Cousins to a, a four-year deal, $180 million, and then going out and taking a quarterback eighth overall. Uh, what's your take on that pick? What What's the thinking behind it? I Because I, I was flabbergasted, I'm not going to lie, when I saw that pick come through. I was I was shocked at first, but then the more I looked into it, you know, Michael Penix is, I, in my opinion, not 
NFL ready. I, I, a lot of people th- say he is, yeah. but I think, but I think sitting and it, Kirk Cousins has nothing to worry about. Like that's his job. Yeah. They gave him that money, you know. Unless he complete, he's not going to completely, you know, crap the bed and and lose his starting his starting spot. He's not going to. So you have a good situation in a young, and I know Michael Penix is a little bit older. I guess he was. He's twenty four, I, I think, right now. Yeah, yeah. twenty four. So he's a little bit older, but yeah. still, he still has no NFL experience. He can sit behind a veteran quarterback, learn from Kirk Cousins, and again, and I think the Vikings, the Vikings coach, even it's not Kirk Cousins' job to teach him. Yeah. But Kirk Cousins isn't that type of person. Kirk Cousins is going to give him all the knowledge he can. He's probably going to, you know, that's a good, that's a good tutor yeah. to have. That's a good little bit of tutelage to have from a quarterback that has done as much as Kirk Cousins has done without, you know, the playoff accolades yeah. and. The, you know, yeah. he hasn't obviously he has, I think one playoff win. But he, yeah. But he's but he's a very good NFL quarterback. Has been a very good NFL quarterback. And we thought the same thing about Kirk Cousins when they drafted him and RG three in the same draft. Yeah, exactly. And here yeah. we are talking about Kirk Cousins all these years later and RG three is making waves on Twitter and on and on TV. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think it was a good move. And who knows if Kirk Cousins gets hurt, you know, Kirk yeah. Cousins has been prone to injury a little bit, get banged up a little bit here and there. So who knows? But yeah. I think it's a good situation. Um, I don't think Falcons fans should be that upset. Could there have been another pick of need or another pick? But no, if you feel like Michael Penix yeah. in the next four or five years is going to be the guy, then why not go yeah. ahead and go get him and have him learn from a veteran quarterback like Kirk Cousins? Yeah, absolutely. And I heard, you know, that they were taught there, there's, there's always stuff that's leaked out and you never know what's a smokescreen, what's real and what's not. There's talk that his agent, Kirk Cousins' agent was shocked or making comments uh, that he didn't realize that was the direction the team was looking to go in. Um, personally, I look at it for Kirk. I'm like, you know, in the NFC South, it's a super weak division right now. Like there's not really any good teams and the Falcons look like they probably would be the best roster on paper. You know, they've got Bijan, Drake, London, Kyle Pitts. You know, I was just looking at, they have Kirk Cousins coming in now. You know, you could add a Dunsey. You could have got him. He was right there for the taking and you have a nice little, uh, array of weapons, uh, that'll be good for a long time to come. Um, but, you know, it, and even drafting Penix wouldn't be so shocking to me. But, you know, the thing that kind of surprises me is, I, you know, you think that they would maybe trade down to get him. Because when I was, I was doing, obviously, a lot of research on QBs because we knew the Vikings needed one. And we knew a lot of teams needed them, needed a quarterback in this draft. Um, and, you know, a lot of people were talking about it. Like, there's obviously Caleb Williams. Everyone knew he was going number one. Drake May widely looked at as the second best. And, and Jaden Daniels up in that 2-3 category. Um uh, and then J.J. McCarthy was kind of like a late riser where a lot of people were putting him forth. And then Penix was kind of looked at as like a guy who would be a late first rounder maybe. But, um, you know, I personally, I was happy when I saw Penix drafted because I was looking at J.J. McCarthy as the guy that we wanted. A lot of people thought we'd have to trade up to get him. And then when I saw Penix taken by Atlanta, I was like, wow, this is actually, he's going to fall right into our lap right now. We only had to get past, uh, you know, the only other thing was if the the Giants decided to take a QB. But, I mean, they already signed... Daniel Jones to like a four-year contract. So they're on the hook for a lot of money there too. So um, I don't know. It, it was interesting. I was happy to see it and it, it looked ridiculous on paper. However, um, you know, I think even though Kirk signed to a four-year deal, I think only the first two years are guaranteed. And I think a lot of people think that after two years, he'll probably be either testing free agency for one last deal or retiring at that point. Um, I don't foresee him being on Atlanta until he's like 39 years old. I think at some point Kirk's going to have to step away. But, um, you know, uh, the, the team has flexibility here. And, you know, there's so many rookie QBs. There's no way that all six of the guys in the first round are all going to pan out. Maybe it's more likely that maybe two of them will pan out and other teams will be looking to redraft again. It's just, uh, it was interesting to see such a big surprise. I don't think any expert or any mock draft had taken Penix that high. Um, but, hey, you know, it's it's crazy, man. Um, all it takes is one pick to kind of change the order of everything that happens in the first round. Um, and, and you could see... You know, a lot of teams drafting for need as far instead of best player available. You, you saw defensive players dropping. I don't think the first defensive player was taken to like uh, Byron Murphy, Seven. the second, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the first the, defensive player was taken 17th, I think. Yeah, it, it was crazy. It's um or, or either 17th or 16th. I think the Vikings might have traded to either 18th or 17th. The Vikings took the second. Oh, lied to it at 15 was the first guy. The Colts took the first defense player. So, yeah, it wasn't until halfway through the first round when we started seeing defensive players move. Um, but yeah, so in- interesting move. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, who do you think were one of the biggest steals in the draft or one of the best value picks that you saw? Um, 
it could be somebody either for your Eagles or somebody that you just yeah, saw I'm that not, you, their value just being, dropped. I'm not even being biased here, but the Eagles being able to trade up and take Cooper DeGene. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think he was going to last that long. And, and I think the Eagles had caught wind that the Rams had traded up to take him. Mm-hmm. And when the Rams didn't, the Eagles were like, all right, we got to get on the phone and, and make a move. And they did. And, and I'm not even being biased. Um, that I think that them doing that, I think uh, there are quite a few teams that did really, really well. And, and the commanders being one of them. Um, I think they've set themselves up. And again, you know, it's the draft. You know, we we don't know how these kids are going to pan out. Yeah. Cooper DeGene very well may be poop. You know, we, yeah. we yeah. don't we don't know that. He might not be an NFL player. Um, yeah. You know, and, and all of these guys, all of these guys may not. Even Caleb Williams, you never know. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I do think um, now the Giants, I think the Giants, what was the Giants? Uh, they, did they end up going with a, with a, receiver right did they take neighbors maybe i want to say neighbors they took neighbors but I, there was uh and i no, and you know what i think i think uh and i'm gonna say this and i hate saying it but the cowboys taking cooper bb i really wanted the eagles to take cooper bb that kid's gonna be pretty good if he gets coached the right way in dallas i think he could be yeah. uh, a perennial pro bowler just the way he plays a game of football but i think that that pick there is a steal for them um and he was i believe he was at a third i think they took him in the third round um, yeah. I didn't think he was going to last to the third round. Um, but, yeah, I, I honestly think Cooper DeGene was actually a, a a pretty big steal for the Eagles, especially – and I, I I didn't think they had it in them. I didn't think yeah. they had it in them to, to address the the cornerback position simply because of who – I know Slay's getting old. I know they think Bradbury is, is washed. But I, I'm looking for a big bounce back year from Bradbury. Yeah. Just be I, – I, that whole the the whole Eagles team played like like ass in the second, the half. second half. It yeah. wasn't just him. It wasn't just Bradbury. The coaching was bad. The playing was bad. Like it just wasn't him. So yeah. I don't think for a second that Bradbury is awful when he's just coming off an All Pro year the year before, and then the entire team having a bad second half. He's yeah. not. He's not just all of a sudden become one of the worst corners in the league. I don't believe that at all. So that yeah. cornerback room is filled now. I th- they have. Quite a few good corners with Slay and Bradbury. They brought back Avante Maddox. They have Keely Ringo, Eli Ricks, who they just drafted, who played a lot last year. Um, yeah. They they still have some corners that are really good special teams guys. I think they have like nine or ten corners on the roster right now. So yeah. not all of them are going to make the team. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what 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 happens with the cornerback room. But I but I'm yeah. I'm interested to see Cooper DeJean in an Eagles uniform for sure. For sure. And then thinking about Ringo, Ringo was taking last year's draft. He was one of the Georgia guys, right? Did he get uh, significant snaps for you guys last year? Like uh... He did. He did towards the end of the year when people got banged up. Um, yep. And he, and him and Eli Ricks both. Eli Ricks was undrafted. We yeah. took him in, uh, after the draft was over. So um, the fact that he played as much as he did and, and got some reps, got some snaps, got some experience. So, again... Maybe maybe the four corners on the Eagles roster come next year is Cooper DeGene, Quinion Mitchell, um, yeah. Eli Ricks, Keely Ringo. Who knows? And you're going so, for the youth movement kind and, of uh, and, the next changing of the guard. Yeah. With, with, with Quinion Mitchell falling into our lap too, like we thought we were going to have to, because there was talks about the Eagles moving up. And the way the first half of the draft went with all the quarterbacks, all the offensive players, it was like, wow, how we don't need to do nothing. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Howie makes nine, I think nine trades on yeah. draft day, which is the most since like 1990. Yeah, and then he also picks up a third, a fourth, and a fifth for next year's draft. Yeah, so Howie Howie Roseman's an absolute wizard. I don't know, I don't know yeah. how he does. It. Well, you, you know, the Eagles are a well-run franchise, and like you guys had a great draft last year. You guys consistently seem to pick up guys like uh, Nolan Smith at the end of the first round. Like you were getting guys that you know were difference makers and playmakers and guys that look like NFL players, um, you know, not just looking at, you know, the measurable stuff and the combine stuff, but like literally guys that you can just tell are going to go on and at some point be good NFL players. Uh, whereas, you know, my Vikings, on the other hand, we we, we whiffed on quite a few picks since uh, Quezzy took over as GM. Um, you know, we had Rick Spielman for a long time and, and Rick did a, a good job of building a defense around Mike Zimmer. Um, but, you know, that team never got the job done. And uh, Rick kind of, also was a huge fan of trading down in the draft, which for me was like super frustrating as a fan because, uh, you know, 
I, I'd always rather see teams be aggressive and trade up for blue chip prospects rather than try to get a couple extra day two or day three picks because 90% of the time, the guys drafted in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, a lot of them aren't even making the, you know, off the practice roster and will never be contributors in the NFL. You know, if you see a guy whose value has dropped, a first rounder, and you trade up to get him, I think it's always the right move because, uh, you know, you can always address things for, through free agency. You can always address positions of need by hiring, signing free agents. Um, but blue chip prospects, you know, it, it's way more valuable to have one first round pick hit than have a bunch of lottery tickets in the mid and late rounds that that may never pan out. Um, you know, one of the steals that I look at, um, you know, and it's not really a steal so much as, like you said, like a player that just kind of fell into their lap. I think um, a Dunsey being available for the Bears with their second pick was a really nice option for them because you know they already have um what's his name the receiver uh dj dj moore right from uh carolina they added uh keenan allen so they got themselves a good veteran receiver there and now they have a young receiver as well so they've got three legit wide receivers to pair up with uh caleb williams they essentially have like a starter pack for their offense where they they got you know potentially a generational talent uh and then have now added playmakers around him so i think that was a nice pick um because i personally thought that he would be gone when the falcons drafted um, so I think they were probably, you know, licking their chops when they saw the Falcons draft Penix and were able to snatch him up. Um, you know, another another player that I think is, uh, again, being a bit of a homer is uh, Dallas Turner. The fact that the Vikings were aggressive and traded back up, because I think with how many offensive players were taken in this draft, a lot of premium defensive talent really fell down later on in the draft. Um, so they did have to give up, you know, some future. Uh, I think they gave up a future second rounder and some extra picks for next year. But um, they got a guy who, you know, a lot of people projected to be a top 10 player in the draft at pick number 17 or 18. Um, and it fills a position of need, too, with Daniil Hunter going down to Houston. You know, he was a all-pro, like a perennial all-pro at defensive end, and edge is one of the most valuable positions there. So hopefully he can be a difference maker. I feel like um, it wasn't a steal in so much that, like, he just fell into our lap. We did have to give up something for him, but I didn't even think the Vikings would have a chance to get another big-name player in the first round. A lot of us thought we'd have to trade our our first rounder, like our pick number 11 and pick number 26, to just get J.J. McCarthy. So to be able to get two players in the first round this year was like really a surprise, um, uh, something I was happy about. Um, yeah, I, re I really like I really like that pick for them. For the, like you said, for them to be aggressive and trade back in. Yeah. Um, not too high on J.J. McCarthy. Um, yeah. But who knows? Again, you never know. He did run a pro style offense. You know, he did come yeah. up big in big spots when he was asked to do things. He's got good. He's got he's got a strong arm. He's got enough athletic ability to to make plays outside of the pocket. And it, so so it's intriguing. Plus, he, you know, you're giving him Justin Jefferson. So who knows? Yeah. Um, I don't know much else outside of Justin Jefferson on the yeah. offense. I mean, we got um, Hawkinson, who's probably like a fringe top five tight end. Yeah, got, I, okay, he, yeah, he'll yeah. be out for a while though. He had a torn ACL, so he'll probably miss the first like maybe quarter of the season or. Third for maybe even the first half of the season because he got injured pretty late in the year. Um, you know, we got Jordan Addison who had a pretty much a thousand yards, ten yeah, touchdowns yeah. as a rookie. Um, yeah. the O line's much improved, but still not, you know, not one of the best in the league, but serviceable. I'd say like of all the rookie QBs, uh, like JJ's not gonna be asked to start week one. We're bringing in Sam Darnold, one of my least favorite players in the league. We're gonna bring him in and rock with him for half the season probably. I don't I don't think there's any shot that JJ McCarthy isn't thrown right into the fire. Yeah, you think I don't so? Think so. I think he's better than Sam Darnold. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think there's probably 50 or 60 quarterbacks who are probably better than Sam Darnold. It's an interesting signing. Like it's, um, but you know, people always say they're like, you know, the Vikings have such a a good offensive core that really like any quarterback could come in and be average. I mean, Nick Mullins, who's god awful, was thrown for 400 yards on multiple occasions last year. Like, you know, you see bums coming in and throw. It, it's just a matter of you know they can throw for all these yards they have all these tar it's just once the red zone comes in that's when they struggle to punch it in and not throw picks but um you know they would they they will have a good offense next year i think um you know but there is a very real possibility that the vikings are the worst team in the nfc north as well like the nfc north has gotten way better packers are going to be good lions are going to be good bears um might have some growing pains but it's not going to be like the fields era where they were winning three games they're going to be good um so there's no freebies it's not like you look at divisional games now and they're like oh nice we can at least win you know four or five of these it's like yeah these might be a dog fight and i think they have one of the top worst like one of the toughest schedules in the league too i think we play the chiefs again next year which is essentially a free loss so it's uh it'll be interesting to see but um yeah i'm sure there's always talent that falls there's always guys that come up in the later rounds that end up being pro bowlers it's just a matter of uh 
waiting a few years and seeing which guys get the opportunity on uh, on, on whatever team took the chance on him. Um, but that being said, um, looking at this draft, who would you say are the big winners of the draft? Um, you know, looking at the hauls that people got and how they set themselves up for for success this season and success in the future. Well, definitely the Bears. Yeah. Um, you know, I I was kind of mixed on Justin Fields. I thought he had all the talent, but none of the coaching. Yeah. Um, but I, I think Caleb Williams has talent to overcome some of the coaching. Yeah. Because um, I, I still don't think the Bears are good coaching wise. I, I yeah. So they got to hope talent, you know, overshadows the coaching. Yeah. Um, commanders definitely. I think the Commanders did did really really well. Uh, I think the Chargers did really really well. Uh, um, obviously my Eagles. I believe the Eagles did really really well. You know, yeah. not positions in need, but there's, you know, that whole Jeremiah Trotter Jr. thing. That being sentimental for us, but he can play too. Like he's yeah. not just a sentimental pick because you know we all loved his dad, and his dad was yeah. an absolute freak. Yeah, um, he's a little undersized. He might be a little slow, but that's all stuff you can you can get. But you can get faster. You can get stronger. So yeah. um, I love yeah, that. Yeah, with an NFL them. conditioning program, like with the strength, they, like with the facilities they have in the NFL too, like you can definitely, and the nutrition programs too, you can see guys take strides. Because um, you, you see guys drafted from like Army and Navy where there's like, you know, a weight restriction too, right? Like you see a lot of those guys where they can only be a certain weight and then when they make it to the NFL, they got to put on 50, 60 pounds to get to their playing weight, you know? But NFL, uh, I'm sure they're juicing these guys up on something. But uh, yeah, yeah, you can definitely teach those cut types of things that athleticism i'd say to some degree i don't think the chiefs did good as a whole but them snagging xavier worthy to give you know it xavier worthy is better than john ross was at the time when john ross was the burner john ross couldn't run yeah. rounds so he didn't have any hands xavier worthy is much better than john ross so that's intriguing yeah. for, the, for the chiefs i think the packers did well i think the lions did well the rams did well the seahawks did well yeah. um but I, I think there i think overall there was a good it was a good draft for a lot of teams now there are yeah. quite a few teams where I'm just like, yeah, what, like what, like the Bills? What are the Bills like? Huh? Yeah, they got that like wide the, receiver, right? Bills like I've seen, just packed it in. Like, yeah, like... yeah, it's it's weird. You saw a couple teams really strip themselves down. Teams that we thought would be contenders, like the Chargers. What they like, obviously, you're saying they had a good draft, but you know, you look at the Chargers. They really, they lost Eckler. They lost Keenan Allen. You know, they've still got a quarterback in his prime or entering his prime. Uh, but they took away all of his weapons. Like he, he lost. There's so much talent loss on the Chargers, and maybe they're just looking at the division, being like, "Can we get past Mahomes for the next? Like, or are we better off retooling and and waiting for the downswing of his career?" Like, it's it's a weird thing. Uh, same thing with the Bills. I I, I kind of see Patrick Mahomes' influence on this draft a lot. Like the Bills are another team where their window looked like it was right now, and now you see them losing their entire wide receiving core, losing their entire defensive back core, essentially. Um, and is it because they realize that they're never going to get past Mahomes and the Chiefs? Are they, are they, is he the next Tom Brady? You know, I see a lot of teams kind of making decisions because they might never be able to compete. It's like, uh, it's kind of like the Utah Jazz with like Stockton and, and, and Malone, like not being able to get past, uh, you know, Jordan and the Bulls. They were a great all time great team, but just uh, the circumstances, it, it makes things difficult um, when you're trying to go against a, a team like the Kansas City Chiefs and, and, and compete against them. Um, I don't I don't even see the Bills making the playoffs. Yeah, well, I mean, the Dolphins took strides last year. The Dolphins are probably, I have them ahead of the Bills right now. Patriots are, are going to be a gong show, but like, yeah. like Patriots don't have enough talent. But it'll be exciting to see Drake May develop. And then um, the Jets, you know, if Aaron Rodgers can be healthy this year, which he probably will be because he had that experimental Achilles surgery and he's had a full year off. Um, and they have a lot of weapons now. Like the, they have a really good defense and they have a lot of uh, guys that Rodgers can throw to. So... Yeah, I'd probably put them as maybe the third team in that division now. I think the Bills' best round. I think the Bills' best draft pick was actually their sixth round pick and taking uh, Daquan Hardy from Penn State. I think that kid's going to be a good NFL DB. Yeah. Um, it, the, the whole like the the all the talk about the Bills' draft is Keon Coleman and how he how he how his personality that he likes to play golf. I saw I saw the interview. I honestly I watched the interview. I was like, yeah, the guy's super charming. He seems like a likable dude. Um, but it's you know. Is he going to be Stephon Diggs? I don't know. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. They, they lost Stephon Diggs. They lost, you know, Gabe Davis. They, they lost guys that we know can produce at an NFL level for a guy who might be a, a good locker room dude. Like, I mean, there's only so much that being a good locker room guy can do. You need to have elite playmakers out there. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was just weird. Like, it was, it was weird seeing them strip down the roster a little bit. Um, and, and I wonder how 
I think Josh Allen's a great quarterback. I had him in my top three going into last year, and uh, now I might have him outside the top five or just on the cusp yeah, of the top five. As, as, as good as Josh Allen is, and as much as to talk about, like that's the type of that's the type of guy you want to build around. Not like yeah. there's no way Stefan. I know Stefan Diggs wanted out of there. He yeah. for whatever reason. Um, yeah. But to not and to not like free agency, they didn't really do anything. They lost more than they got. Oh, 100%. So, like, yeah. It's like you're just going to let Josh Allen just rot away the last whatever, the last half of his career Yeah. Um, and not bring anybody in. I mean, yeah. I don't know. They were, they were on the cusp. So why not make moves to put you over that yeah. instead of getting worse? Because eventually, you know, if their one thing was not being able to get past the Chiefs, you know, like that one game they, they where they – they took the lead super late and then blew it where they came so close. It was like 35, 35 or whatever. And then, you know, Bills fans were in tears. It was probably the most, you know, the most meaningful Bills football game since the 90s Super Bowl runs. Um, and then they ended up losing it in the final seconds. Like since then, um, you know, yeah, you'd think that would be like kind of the shot in the pants of like, let's get that one extra weapon. Let's mortgage a little bit of our future to try and go all in right now because we're this close to beating the best team in football. And we can do it next year. And now I just feel like they're maybe a couple years away and, and Josh Allen's only going to get older. Um, yeah. You know, eventually at some point, the Chiefs might not be able to re-sign all these guys, but I feel like, you know, they also are able to get quality veterans who are willing to come and, and take less money to play for their team as well. But, um, you know, who knows? Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. But, um, you know, as far as winners for me, like I, I, I look at, like, I, I love what the Vikings were able to do. Like, they, they had a good draft. It, not in that they drafted a ton of players, but they got quality players. Um, you know, I, I look at drafting Lewis Sign. Like, we had an opportunity to pick up Kyle Hamilton a couple years ago, three years ago now. And um, we decided to trade down, and we drafted Lewis Sign in the last pick of the first round. And he's played, like, maybe six games for us. He had an injury in his rookie year, but he looks like he might not even make the team this year in his third season in the league. It's like... I'm I'm kind of sick of of missing out on on players uh, and swinging and missing, trying to like outsmart the system. Um, you know, Bears obviously they look like they did a really good job in the draft. Like they're going to be, uh, they're going to be a good team, and it's going to be a tough division for like the next five years. We got young quarterbacks uh, on two of those teams. Then Jared Goff, who had been written off by many people, actually becoming a serviceable. I don't think he's a top five quarterback in the league, but I think he's like could be a top ten quarterback. He's um, good enough with the other weapons that they have there. Um, you know, Eagles always seem to draft well. Like they, they're a well-run, uh, a well-run team. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Like you can't really evaluate a draft till you know a couple years down the road. But um, definitely, like you said, a lot of teams address a lot of needs. Um, but I want to get into talking about the losers of the draft too. Teams that you kind of were like scratching your head, um, or teams that you know maybe uh, maybe didn't really go best player available and drafted desperately. Um, are there any teams that you think really bungled their draft this year? Uh, again, the Bills. I really think the Bills, with trading, I and I get, and they didn't. They traded out twice. They traded out twice before they even got a pick. Uh, they traded out of the first mm -hmm. round. They traded out of early in the second round. Um, again, the same, the whole what we were just talking about. Yeah, to, to have a quarterback the caliber of Josh Allen yeah. and not want to get him. And I know they got Keon Coleman, yeah. but there were other receivers that I I, I don't know. I, I don't know what their thinking is. Um, maybe, uh, who knows? I don't, I don't, yeah. I, I hate it for Bills fans. Um, I, another, uh, the Raiders, I don't know if the Raiders. Yeah, they took the tight end Brock Bowers in the first yeah. round. I think they wanted yeah. a quarterback. I think they really yeah, wanted they, a quarterback yeah. and they didn't get one. Yeah. And they've already got a good tight end, good tight end and uh, Michael Meyer. Yeah. Like, it's not like they needed a tight end. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know Brock Bowers is a different type of, different type yeah. of breed. I didn't understand. I definitely didn't understand that. They're going to have to run a Patriots style two tight end offense now to utilize those guys. It's true. Like, you know, draft that they basically maybe went best player available, but uh, the, you know, it's nice when best player available aligns with one of your team needs, you know, but uh, yeah, in this case, they definitely seem to have, uh, you know, gone best player available, but it's not going to make it much of an impact since they already had, they're already set at that position. Um, you know, I, I thought the, Michael Penix might've potentially landed there. I think they were probably surprised that, all the guys are already off the board at pick number 12. I don't know if they were aggressively looking to trade up and get somebody. Um, but, uh, yeah. They, I, don't think they, I don't think they thought that it was going to go the way it went. I really yeah. thought they thought they thought there was going to be a quarterback there for them to take. Mm -hmm. the time and and, and Bo, Bo Nix was the only one. Bo Nix was, like, the only yeah, one. And Bo he's, Nicks. like, 
Yeah, he's not. I, I don't think he's anything special. I and that's you know one of the teams that I think was a loser in the draft was the Broncos. I think the Broncos using a first round pick on Bo Nix and and then uh, and Sammy West in the building. <laughs> What's up, Sammy? Um, I, I I think Sean Payton's got to be one of the most unlikable characters in the NFL, man. I I I don't know. I personally like going back to the Bounty Gate years. He had that whole you know thing of 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 incentivizing head hunting. Um, and then, you know, he, he disappeared for a while and now he's back and, and, you know, the way he handled the Russell Wilson situation, like that was crazy. Um, because the team is on the hook for so much dead money and, uh, they're, they're going to be paying Russ Wilson's salary for the next few years. Like that was crazy. But then, uh, you know, I heard after the draft too, he's saying, you know, the guy he always wanted was Bo Nix the whole time. And he was sending out smoke screens so that other teams would take other QBs. And I'm like, there's no way you wanted Bo Nix. That, that's a desperate pick right there. You know, you're, you're reaching it like some COVID super senior who's already, you know, way older than most of the players in the draft are. And, and uh, you know, just kind of desperately taking a stab and hoping that he works out. But I, honestly, I didn't see anybody talking about Bo Nix before the draft uh, as being a first round pick. I thought he would have for sure been available, um, yeah, he's, you know, yeah, he's in the second not. round or later in the first. But it was more it was more of a desperation pick, too, because there was no other quarterbacks on the board. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and who's the next one? Like I don't, Rattler, I don't even know who their starter is now. If it, I have no clue. Be, if it wouldn't be Bo Nix, but you would think, I mean, I don't, I don't look for, I don't look that far ahead in the draft, but what quarterbacks coming out are coming out next year that might've been there. If you're just going to a stop gap yeah. with just use who you got, you don't have that good a roster to begin with. Yeah. You're not going to win. You're not going to win exponentially more games with Bo Nix to yeah. improve, to, to drop your draft stock. You're going to be picking in the top five next year too. So yeah. yeah hell, Shadur Sanders, Sammy's, Bringing up Shadur Sanders coming out next year. Do, do you think he'll be the, the one of the top QB? I mean, he looked really good the first, like, four or five weeks of the college season. I watched a ton of Colorado games early in the season. He looked really good. Like, um, I, I, I don't know how he projects, like, how his body projects to be, like, an NFL quarterback. And then I, I think Texas's quarterback might have gone back to, to spend his senior year with Texas as well. Um, yeah. So he, I'm assuming yeah, he'll probably have, be one of the yeah. top guys. But it, But it's definitely a much weaker class next year. For QBs, like this is probably one of the strongest QB classes in a long time. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting. Like it's true, you might need to really legitimately get, you know, a bottom three pick to get a QB next year that's going to change your franchise. Only, honestly, I honestly think the only ones that are going to pan out are Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I don't think the other. This is a lot. Bo Nix as well. I'm gonna. I'll throw Bo Nix in there. I don't think the other four really. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, again, J.J. McCarthy's only thing is that he ran a pro-style offense. I don't like yeah. Drake May. I watched Drake May a, a ton at North Carolina. Yeah. He wasn't lighting shit up at North Carolina. Yeah. So, I, I heard, I heard. you know, they all have their weaknesses. Like, I've heard, uh, you know, Jaden Daniels compared a lot to Justin Fields. Like, he's definitely the most mobile quarterback of the draft. Uh, a little bit older, too. I think he's, like, 23. I think, you know, he's played. What's weird to me, too, is how many of these quarterbacks have played for so many teams, like, with the transfer portal now. All these QBs coming into the draft have played for like two two or three different teams. Penix, same thing. You know that that's kind of a weird thing to me. Like that they play in multiple different styles of offenses over their tenure in college now. Um, but uh, you know Drake May, what I heard from him was that he didn't have a lot of offensive line. He was forced to kind of run for his life a lot of the time. And really, I don't know. I, I I've heard him compared kind of to a, a Josh Allen type, but I, I can't say that I've watched many uh, North Carolina games. Um, yeah, J JJ was a guy who was projected to be a second rounder, I think, until the national championship game. So I don't think he was really looked at as a top tier quarterback. His stra his stock kind of rose after the combine. Um, it'll be interesting, you know. There's a good chance, like you said, like there's no way all six of these guys pan out. And who knows? Like Penix may never even get a shot. He'll be 26 years old before he even gets a shot, unless Kirk's, yeah. you know, health isn't great. Um, so we'll, we'll see. It'll be it'll be intriguing to see how this quarterback class develops. Um, I think, you know, yeah, losers, I, I think definitely the Broncos I'd put as a, as a loser. I'm trying to think what other teams I didn't really hear about making any waves, but uh, I'm not going to lie, after the first round, when I saw the Vikings got their two blue chippers, I didn't watch the next two days of the draft. I, I was like, um, I was pretty happy with what we got and, and whatever else I was like, you know, it's all gravy at this point. I don't think, I don't think the Giants did, did much of anything other than that Malik Neighbors. And I even think Malik, that Malik Neighbors pick is, was a reach too. Yeah. Um, obviously, the <laughs> neighbors was the LSU gonna, guy, right? Daniel he was the Jones LSU guy. Going to be their quarterback, so um, yeah. Unless they try and pull pull an eagle, what the Eagles did with with Carson Wentz after the Eagles gave Carson Wentz all that money, yeah, and somehow turn that, but and somehow turn that Daniel Jones debacle into 
what the Eagles did with with the Carson Wentz stuff. Because with the Carson Wentz stuff, the Eagles turned that into AJ Brown, Jalen Carter. <laughs> like they, the yeah. Eagles were able to turn that catastrophe into yeah. something really, really good. So yeah, that's that's crazy to think about. Like it's uh yeah if they, if they I I don't foresee them being able to move that contract at all. But uh, I I don't know, man. Last year there were a couple of weird QB signings. Daniel Jones being one of them. It was like four years, one hundred and sixty million, and then also Dino yeah. Smith getting four years. I think the exact same contract as Daniel Jones pretty much um, after one year of success, after being in the league for like take, eight years with no success. I would definitely take Smith over, over Daniel Jones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Daniel Jones really got paid off of beating my Vikings, so you can thank the Vikings for for driving his value up. And and honestly, kind of taking the Giants out of contention in the NFC East for like the foreseeable future. Like, you know, if the Vikings defense hadn't been so historically bad that year and made him look like Josh Allen in one playoff game, there's a good chance that he would have walked and, and they would have been looking to draft a QB, you know, last season. So, um, yeah, I definitely think the the Vikings being terrible played a role in him getting that contract. Um, but, yeah, so we, we got a couple teams that were winners, a couple teams that were losers. Now let's maybe get into a little bit of a breakdown of of our home teams and how we think they did. Um, so, Kept for the Eagles, um, talk about, you know, their draft picks and the ones that you really think uh, were good fits for the team and that might be difference makers for you guys going forward. Well, I obviously I knew more about Terion Terion Arnold being from Alabama. Obviously knew more about him, so I was high on him. But then uh, leading up to the draft, trading, talking about trading up, and I'm like, who who are we trading up to get? That is that like I don't think we need to trade up to get anybody, even if it is Terion Arnold. We we didn't even we we could have took Terion Arnold. He was sitting there too, but Quinion Mitchell fell into our hands, and I didn't yeah. know much about him. Um, obviously with him being from Toledo. Um, so I went right to, 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 to doing some research and I saw his size, he's decent size, six foot, like 200 pounds or something like that, yeah. 195, 200 pounds. Um, he ran a four, three, three, which is phenomenal. Right? Yeah. Size. Um, and then everybody was high on his senior bowl tape. So I was like, all right, let me go watch the senior bowl stuff. And even though he's from a small school in Toledo, he didn't go up against top notch yeah. talent, but he was locking stuff down, obviously. But then yeah. I saw his senior bowl tape and how he locked up Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik mm. Neighbors. And he was he he was by far the best player in the senior bowl. And you're going yeah. up against all stars. That's basically an all star lineup of guys that, you know, are trying to, you know, get in get into the NFL and whatnot. Yeah. So when I saw all that, I was like, all right, yeah, right. The right pick. And then obviously Terry and Arnold, you know, that he's gone. He's in he's with the, the Lions drafting him now. But I'm very happy with that pick. And then for yeah. us to trade yeah. up. Um, and and Washington is the one that traded with us for us to move up to into the second round because we didn't have a second round pick. Yeah. Um, we didn't have we didn't have a second round pick. So for us to move back up into the second round and take Cooper DeGene, who I thought was definitely going to be drafted very very high at least late first early second. Yeah. For us to get him, he was really really good, and you know, we can make all the jokes we want about him being a white DB, yeah. but the kid can play, man. Yeah. The kid can play. He's a football player. I mean, he went to yeah. Iowa. He's a football player. He ran a four, four. So he's not in the, in the least bit slow and he can play, he can play outside. He can play inside. He can play safety. So yeah. who knows with Vic Fangio coming in, what Cooper DeGene is going to mean to the Eagles as far as packages are concerned and disguising coverages and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, their round three pick was Jalix Hunt out of Houston, Houston Christian, you know, obviously yeah. another small school, but they liked his, their, their NFL GMs and coaches. And yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just big kept 13 who sits yeah. on Twitch and talks shit and plays Madden. Right. I don't know yeah. anything. Exactly. So yeah, they liked his talent. Um, and he's, he doesn't have to come in and play right away. They can develop him. He's an edge guy. He's a very athletic edge guy. Um, you know, they brought in Bryce Huff. They, they kept Josh Sweat. I hate that we lost Hassan Reddick. Um, but, yeah. we're, but we've been known for rotational defensive lines. But who knows with Vic Fangio? We don't, I don't know what he's going to do. Um, he might be a stand-up edge guy, dropping into coverage type guy. I know Vic Fangio likes to do that a lot. And he, Josh Sweat is not a coverage guy. <laughs> Bryce Huff is not a, a coverage guy. He can do multiple things with Nolan Smith. and Jalex Hunt reminds me a lot of Nolan Smith. Yeah. Very, very fast, very quick, very athletic. Um, yeah. I loved, I loved their uh, taking another white, uh, another white uh, uh, specialty DB, position. Yeah, uh, a running guy, yeah. back, Will Shipley. 
I lo- I watched a lot of white ship uh Will <laughs> White Ship. Hmm. <laughs> I watched a lot of Will Shipley at Clemson. That kid's another football player. Plays football the right way. Can can bl- can pick up blitzes. Will run routes. Can catch. He's a very very good running back. For him to be there in the fourth round, I thought he was a second round or third round guy just be, by the way he plays. A um, little slow, a little on the slow end, but you know I love that pick just because again he's a football player. Uh, then I think uh, it was Aeneas Smith. Uh, wide receiver from Texas A&M. Really, really quick slot receiver, punt returner, kick returner. I, as much as we love Britton Covey and make jokes about how he gets annihilated every time he touches the ball and gets tackled, Britton Covey came on late last year with his, with his return ability. But I think Aeneas Smith is our guy as far as punt return, kick return, third down, you know, slot receiver. Um, yeah. And then obviously round five was Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Pulled at the, you know, pulled at the, the heartstrings a little bit with as yeah. much as I loved his dad, you know, when we went to the Super Bowl, when he played for us in the 2000s, and he was on that Super Bowl team in 03 against yeah. the Patriots. With T.O. Jeremiah, yeah. his dad was a hell of a football player. Yeah. Um, so to, it's going to make him work, right? I think he, and he's yeah. a tireless worker. They always talk about his motor and how hard he works, his football IQ. Um, he's, a, he's a tackling, he's a tackling machine. So, and yeah. the Eagles needed a linebacker. We don't have no linebackers. So, yeah, exactly. to get him in the fifth round, I love that pick a lot. Actually love their other fifth-round pick, uh, Trevor Keegan. He's a guard from Michigan. He is a psycho. The dude is a psychopath on the football field. And I think yeah. with, with learning from, uh, learning from uh, Jeff Stoutland, probably the best offensive line coach in football now and probably ever, um, I think he's going to learn a lot from from Jeff Stoutland and become a good guard eventually because we're eventually going to need him to step in at some point um, yeah. with Cam Jurgens moving over to to center now that Jason Kelsey's gone. Uh, Tyler Steen looks like he's going to get the starting nod at guard, even though he was a tackle, but I think they're going to slide him into guard. Um, yeah. Johnny Wilson uh, was the round six pick, the wide receiver from Florida State. I think he's more of a tight end. He's like six foot seven or something. He's, he's a tall dude, yeah. but he's, he's not – He's not. I don't think he's a wide receiver. He'd definitely be, if he makes an NFL team, would be at tight end. Yeah. Um, and then they got the uh, center from NC State, who, again, really good. I think I watched some tape on him because I really wasn't sure. And he looks like a good, a good, he might be a guard type guy, too. Yeah. Um, but, again, you're, you're, bringing in, you're bringing in those guys, and they're going to learn from the best when it comes to the Eagles offensive line. You're going to learn from, from not just the offensive line, but – Jeff Stoutland and Jason Kelsey is still going to be around the team. He's already said he's still going to be around the team. Yeah, is he going to so. be taking an advisory role or at least helping out during like rookie uh, camps I know, and stuff well, like they that? Did add him, they did add him to uh, the Monday night football roster. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if he's going to – he's not going to be in the booth, but he's going to be like yeah. a Monday night personality for Monday night football. Nice. Um, but he's still going to be around the team. And Fletcher Cox, too, is still going to be around the team, he said. So, yeah, you know, he's still going to be there for, you know, mentorship and, and those young guys and stuff. But I really yeah. like the Eagles, and I'm not again. I'm not being biased because there were a few years where the Eagles completely whiffed on the draft. There were a, there were there were a, a few good years where they didn't really take anything in the draft. So, but now these yeah. last few years, this year especially, I think I can't wait for football season to start. Not just oh, with yeah, the draft, yeah. but with the off season moves. Obviously, Saquon. Um, the Eagles signed Makai Becton after the draft was over. Yeah. Um, so we no longer. He was have uh, to the Jets about. tackle, right? He was. He was not that yeah. drafted that long yeah. ago. I he feel like. First but... round pick. Mackay yeah, yeah, was he was. Pick. Yeah. Uh, well, so, and then again, like maybe it's just a matter of being coached up by a better exactly. offensive line coach. Exactly. I think he obviously we don't was, have to worry about had the intangibles he drafted worry, by. We don't have to worry about that parking cone Jack Driscoll being Lane Johnson's backup if he goes yeah. out. Yeah. So well, you got to have like a swing I'd tackle too, like yeah. And then Jack Driscoll. Yeah. No, it, honestly, it sounds like you guys added a lot of uh, a lot of talent, and and you know that was the biggest question for me is like who's going to replace Kelsey? Like, do you guys have uh, a, a a starter oh, Cam, pegged for Week One? Cam Jurgens is going to be an absolute monster. He, yeah, like I said, he's learned from Jason Kelsey. He sat behind Jason Kelsey for two years. Yeah, um, he slides right over. He they even gave him Jason Kelsey's old locker. Oh yeah, so, nice. Uh, he I, he's I think he's going to be just another Jason Kelsey. He plays the same exact way. Yeah. Um, he's built the, he's built the same. He's just a football player, man. And yeah, I don't think we're not, I don't think we're going to miss a beat with Cam Jurgens at center. Yeah. 
Well, will we still hear Kelsey performing on the the annual Christmas album from the uh, Eagles offensive lineman? Because honestly, who was it? Who's the uh, who, who's the one guy? The guard who's got like the crazy high falsetto voice. There's one guy oh, on that. Oh, he's Jordan, Jordan Mylotta can sing. He's man. got an unreal voice. I was yeah. shocked. Like like he's legitimately. Uh, uh, did he ever sing the national anthem at a game or something? I feel like I've seen him. He did. He had. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah. he's got a hell of a voice. Yeah, unreal man. But uh, yeah, looks like you guys. Man, his size. Yeah, yeah. Well, my Vikings, you know, they were obviously addressed the biggest position need, like getting a quarterback. And and like you said, you 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 don't have high hopes for for JJ McCarthy. I know my guy Jay Sully in the chat's been saying he'll be one of the guys that pans out, but he's a Michigan fan, so I mean, it makes sense that he's high on him. Um, you know, I I was kind of looking at it like, you know, JJ, I was totally fine to take if we used our pick on him. I wasn't, you know, I was even I was okay enough with JJ that I would have been willing to give both of our first round picks to get him if we needed, because I thought that he was a legit top four QB in this draft. Um, A lot of people thought it was going to be an even higher price to pay just because of how desperate teams were for QBs this year. So I was happy with the value that we only had to trade up a little bit and move up from 11 to 10. I think probably just to try and block the Raiders maybe from, um, you know, we just wanted to make sure that the Raiders didn't trade up. Yeah. So it made sense to to trade up a little bit just to to get him. But, um, you know, it kind of was nice that he fell right into our lap. So that's, uh, I, I still don't think, I know you're saying you think he might get thrown into the fire. I feel like, you know, Darnold, like Darnold, the name, I've trolled no quarterback more than Sam Darnold in the last few years, just because of uh, mainly my, my guy, B. Johnsy, who's in the chat, always talking about, uh, he used to be talking about him like he was the second coming. So I, I've, I've talked a lot of smack about Darnold, but um, I mean, he was one of those guys who had a really good pro day and his stock rose to the point where he was drafted really high. So there might be something there. With, with good coaching. I think KOC is a pretty good quarterback coach and um, he's got a lot of weapons around him, but I, I really don't think we'll see JJ until at least halfway into the season, barring injury. Um, I, I think if we do see Darnold get injured, I, it, the fans will get pretty restless if Jaron Hall has to come in. He was the 25-year-old rookie we drafted last year out of BYU. He, he started a couple games last year when Kirk went down. He got injured in his second start, so we really didn't get to see what he could do, but I've seen enough to know that he's not an NFL level quarterback. Um, he was never drafted to be a replacement to Kirk Cousins. He was more drafted to be a guy who can stick around as a backup, you know, young enough that you can kind of teach him the system and he can stick around uh, for five years and 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 be a, a plug and play guy. But um, you know, I was really pleasantly surprised with the Dallas Turner pickup. Like that, that's a guy that I think will be a difference maker for us. Um, Flores has added like so many players. Like we signed a ton of linebackers. A linebacker is one of our weakest positions. We signed, uh, I think we signed like four or five guys in free agency. Uh, we got um, uh, Van Ginkle from uh, the Dolphins. Uh, he'll plug in and play. Ivan Pace, the undrafted free agent, who was actually, I believe, a D-end in college, uh, but like severely undersized. He played middle linebacker and had a really good rookie season for us last year. Um, you know, we got Greenard from uh, from the Texans. We signed him, um, who's, I think he had over 10 sacks last year. Um, so having Greenard you know, opposite Dallas Turner gives us a couple decent edge rushers. And then, you know, we kind of address the middle line, the interior linebacker positions. That's been one position we've drafted linebackers almost every year, like in the third, fourth round, none of them ever make it beyond special teams players. Like none of them have, have panned out. So I I was glad to see us just realize that for whatever reason, we don't know how to draft linebackers. Let's just go sign a bunch of them. Uh, So that was a refreshing thing. Um, And then it was weird because, you know, we had such a busy first night, and then the Vikings didn't have any second or third round picks at all because we had used all that as ammo to trade up. So um, the next pick we had was, uh, uh, I can't remember his name, Kyrie, something or other. He's like a six foot four cornerback from Oregon. Um, so we picked him up Kyrie in the fourth Jackson. round. Kyrie Jackson, that's the one. And, and he's got a real uh, typical cor- cornerback uh, personality. Like he said, you know, I'm the best cornerback in this draft, but you're going to get me late because of political reasons. He's, he seems like he's got like kind of a crazy um ego to him which honestly i find is is a good quality to have in most cornerbacks um i i I think um you know he's a project and he may never pan out but you know the the potential of having someone with the same body and the same frame as like a Tariq woolen is really uh you know the vikings haven't really had a big body cornerback like that in a long time since maybe xavier rhodes and he was only i think six two so um worth taking a shot on on somebody who's got you know really good athleticism ran a good 40 time and also has like you know, that frame. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, I think we drafted a tackle late. Uh, we do need offensive line help. Like we kind of let like Dalton Reisner, who who we signed in week five, he, he has this thing where he just doesn't get signed to like week five every single year. Like we might bring him back at this point. 
I think we were holding out because we would have had to give up a compensation draft pick if we signed him before the draft. So um, we definitely need, you know, a guard. But we did sign a, a, a tackle project. And I think we um, we also signed a uh, – we also drafted a kicker as well, which, um, I mean, Greg Joseph is on the Packers, which I think is awesome because he was horrible. So now to see him go to the Packers and be their starting kicker next year just makes me so happy because he missed – I swear it was like every two games he missed an extra point. Um, you know, he wasn't super – accurate with his field goals beyond you know 35 yards so i think the packers are going to hate him uh you know and getting a guy who's been really accurate in college I mean, they, yeah um, they, did, they didn't just draft any kicker they draft yeah. the point leader in ncaa history so yeah it's not like he can't kick <laughs> exactly and i don't think he's missed an extra point in like an obscene like uh, an obscene number of extra points like that was just so frustrating it's not a big deal when you look at one point but it's just deflating when you go down in every game you can count on you know trying to tie the game up and you're down one still because your stupid kicker can't get it through the uprights from like, you know, 27 yards away. It, it's, uh, it, it, I think it was a good pick. You know, I don't typically like drafting punters and kickers. I feel like a lot of them are available in free agency out of college, but um, in this case, I thought it was a good pick. Did, um, NFL, what NFL team took like a punter or kicker in the third round? I, I did hear that. Yeah, that's crazy to me too. And, and, you know, the Vikings, I think are going to have a new punter too. I, th I think we got rid of, um, I, 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 I don't know, Ryan Wright, uh, when he came into the Vikings, he was excellent his first year. Like he was pinning, he he probably had the most kicks like pinned inside the ten yard line, and he had a booming leg. And then last year he was just horrible. So it's it, it, Jake what? Moody. That's right. It was the the Forty Niners. Uh, wait, Jake Moody's a kicker though. He's a kicker. He's not a punter. I don't know who took a a punter um this year, but I do remember hearing that one was drafted. I mean, that's a position. I I'm used to playing Madden where I I don't I punt once every six months in Madden. You know, like it's very rare that I use them, but I guess in the NFL it's important especially if you're on a terrible team where your offense can't move the ball. Uh, you know, Jordan Stout, the Ravens took a punter. Interesting. Must be nice to have a deep enough roster that you can afford to waste the draft pick on a punter. I could never imagine. Um, but yeah, you know, overall, I think the Vikings had a good draft. I I'm excited. I, I still think, you know, on paper, even with all the additions that we made, uh, you know, uh, and I think most people think that Dallas Turner is like NFL ready, but, you know, J.J. McCarthy, ju the jury's still out. I still think on paper it's very possible that we're the worst team in the NFC North. Um, but I do think that, you know, it was refreshing to see Quezzy and Kevin O'Connell kind of put their stamp on this team. Brian Flores has definitely put his stamp on this team. I, I really thought he'd be a head coach by now. I didn't think we'd have him for two years. So I was happy to see him stick around because even though we had some ugly blowout games, down the stretch of the season. Um, he definitely improved the defense, and it was nice to kind of uh, switch, you know, to a 3-4 defense. And, and, you know, going from a 4-3 for like 10 years to switch into a 3-4, it takes a while to kind of get the personnel right. Um, you know, he likes to have safeties all over the field. He'll have like four or five safeties on the field at any given time. He loves having a ton of linebackers on the field. Um, I, I think, you know, they really got their guys. You know, the first year Quezzy was here, there's so much pressure to run it back because we had 13 wins. But any Vikings fan knew that that 13-win season, we were like an eight-win team. Like, we won so many games by, you know, a field goal, by miracles, you know, coming back against the Colts down, like, 30-plus points. It, it was kind of like a Fugazi, like, um, you know, I, I think Quezzy felt a lot of pressure to just kind of run it back and stay competitive. But now he's doing a full rebuild, and um, a lot of the Mike Zimmer era players and Rick Spielman era players are gone. Um, it's just refreshing to kind of turn the page and be like, okay, these are our guys going forward. We're going to develop them and we're going to build the team our way. So I'm, I'm excited for the future. I have no expectations of being a playoff team next year, but that's almost like more refreshing because I did have expectations of being a playoff team last year and it went sideways really quick when Kirk went down. Um, so yeah, over, overall really happy about the draft and uh, you know, hopefully being aggressive and trading up is a, is a new thing as opposed to the Rick Spielman of trading down and getting a whole bunch of seventh round picks that never pan out. It's fun. It's fun as much shit. As much shit as we get being Philadelphia fans, it's fun to be fan of teams that you can at least look forward to playing. Like I can't imagine, yeah. like there were there were a lot of there were a few years where I just didn't look forward to football season or baseball season or yeah. basketball season, especially for during the trust the process. But it's 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 very fun being a fan of a team where you look forward to them playing, and I've yeah. looked forward to the Eagles playing for a while now. So. I can't imagine being Raiders fans or Panthers oh, yeah. fans or yeah. I mean, now I think Bills fans like Bills fans suffered for a while and now you're like looks like they're going back into that you know not looking forward to much other than watching yeah. your quarterback be one of the best in the game without anything around them. Yeah, um, absolutely.
And man, I mean, you know, I'm just Viking, thinking of you know, Vikings, Vikings fans haven't haven't seen a Super Bowl or have, no. don't have a Super Bowl. Apparently, like, we have four like, appearances, but that was all in the '70s, like well before I was in existence. So uh, apparently, we were the '70s version of the bid, the '90s Bills. That's what I that's what I've learned. Uh, but yes, we haven't really sniffed it since like probably 1998 when we had Randall oh, Cunningham no, and no, and rookie no Moss. Those yeah. '70s teams were so good too, man. The, their defense was insane. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a different game though, and and we'll see. It's uh it's tough. Like honestly, you know, the Eagles have made a Super Bowl in the last two years. You, you know, you guys could very well run it back. I, I I had you guys pegged as like the the NFC representative. I mean, the Niners look like they're going to be really good too. Like that's probably your biggest competition going into next season. Um, you know, it's just a matter of uh, turning things around after an ugly second half. Uh, you know, they, it, hopefully uh, you guys get off to a hot start. You guys got off to a nine and zero start last year, right? And then things went sideways. So ten and um, one, ten and one. Yeah, it, it's 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 incredible. But uh, you know, hopefully it's just a one off, and you guys are back having a good season. Speaking, the lion, the lions too. Lions are, are are creeping up too as well for sure. While we're talking about the draft, though, I gotta I gotta do this. I know, like you know, with Twitch, you meet. You know, you meet professional athletes, you meet, you know, famous yep. people and stuff and people fanboy and all this other stuff, try and chase clout when it comes to professional athletes and trying to get collabs with them and all this other stuff. Yeah. They're the Packers in the sixth round drafted a kid out of Georgia State and his name is Travis Glover. Yeah. I know him as Seahawks will be champs. It's takeoff. He has been in my Twitch chat since he was a freshman in high school. Wild. That's crazy. He's he sent me he sent me some apparel from Georgia State. I have a hat, I have a beanie. Um, he's supposed to send me his game worn bowl game jersey. I think what they played. I think they played Florida. Yeah. Well, oh, that's that's got to be a that's got to be a good bowl game then. Oh, no, 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 no. What well, was it? Shit, I forget what bowl game it was. But he's supposed to be send me his game worn bowl game jersey. Um, he's already talking about getting me to Brazil because he got drafted wow. by the Packers. Yeah, he's yeah. already talking about getting me to Brazil to to see the Packers and the Eagles. Yeah, you can go with W and his wife. I think they're heading down to Brazil this year. Bro, I think they have plans for I, it. Yeah. I, I had just turned the draft off after the Eagles' sixth round pick, so I missed the pick. I knew he was. I knew he was going to get drafted. He yeah. didn't even get invited to the combine. Uh, he wow. did go to the Senior Bowl. He had a good showing at the Senior Bowl. He was letting me know all that. But yeah. when I saw his name, I was looking. I was cruising Twitter, and I saw. I just stopped. Just so happened to stop at the Packers draft picks. And I saw his name as their six round pick, bro. It, w- it yeah. was like my own son got drafted because I've known yeah. him since he was in ninth grade. Um, That's unreal. But, bro, I was so like, I'm getting chills just thinking about it now because I yeah. know, I know the family he comes from. I know the situation he comes from. I know h- how humble he is, how good of a kid he is, just how hard he's worked to yeah. get drafted. Like, just knowing somebody in that situation. And, uh, but he, he popped into the stream, I think the night after the draft and I had streamed Saturday night watching the draft and uh but or or Friday night I didn't stream this the draft Saturday night but I streamed it Friday night but seeing it but him coming into the stream Sunday night and him being so happy and me like it was just it was an awesome moment like I what you know you have those moments on Twitch sometimes but that's one of those moments with how happy he was how happy I was for him yeah but he's such bro he's he's such a good kid man and it's bro he's six seven three twenty like, dude, yeah. fuck, bro. He's dude, he'll make an that's... NFL roster, whether it's with the Packers or not. He'll make an yeah. NFL roster because he's that good. He's raw and he's yeah. but he's coached. Yeah. So, or he could become I, the best player in CFL history with that frame. He could, he could, he could set reset the record books in the CFL if he wanted to. But that that's crazy, man. That's actually awesome. And and it's uh, it's a small world too. And it's funny too. You know, I, I was thinking of you know NFL connections. You know, we've had uh, at one point the quad god came through my chat last year. You know, Packers player. I'm a big Vikings fan. You know, super humble and like gracious. Too. A few times, yeah. yeah, I know Austin Eckler was raiding a bunch of guys. Joe Mixon back a couple of years ago was streaming a lot, but it's um, you know, uh, Darrington Evans, who again, you know, he's been been kind of bouncing around trying to, you know, obviously drafted by the Titans, a uh, uh, cup of tea with the Bears, um, you know, with the Bills. I think I think for parts of last year, like you know, trying to hang on and and find a spot in the league, but like you know, a guy who you know had quite a few accolades in college, like the best one of the best players at his school in a, in a, in a um you know just super approachable super humble and you know we we forget that like a lot of these athletes you know for them twitch is actually like their tv you know this younger generation like a lot of these guys like they don't tune tune into like a a show the way that i would have done when i was you know 20 something and and watch tv they they watch twitch to to just he's he's gifted me a few subs kenneth gainwell 
Oh, wild man. It's, it, it's crazy. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I always talk to you, I have like a collection. I, I got big into during COVID like card collecting and stuff. And I have like an entire set of like uh, Darrington Evans rookie cards. And I'm not looking at it as my retirement thing, but I'm like, you know what? He's such a cool dude. And somebody you just want to root for like um, a hard worker, like approachable dude, just like honestly does not take his, um his platform like for granted like he really you know he's out there grinding like the way he approached streaming was the same way that anybody would approach streaming he knows i i think he kind of became a, a hero on twitch when he kind of called out was it devin bush who was talking about getting, yeah. getting into it with, with streamers and, and he kind of came to the streamers defense saying you know uh it's not easy to average 100 viewers on twitch it's not easy to average you know 50 viewers on twitch like you got to be really good at what you do to, to captivate an audience and um and, and Kep, man, I think you do a great job of, of you know, whether you're streaming full time like you're doing right now or, or trying to fit it in around a work schedule and family schedule. Like you do a great job of, of, of you know, you talk about before I met you, you know, what Twitch was like and how it was crazy and, and popping and everybody was on, you know, watching Twitch. And now it's a lot tougher to come by viewers. You know, you got to really you got to really provide value to keep those regulars coming back. Um, but uh, no, you do a great job of being consistent with it and, and, and you know, networking and and being good to the people that are uh you know that 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 show up for you and i really appreciate you coming through this podcast man and and uh you know just making yourself available because you know when i started streaming four years ago i would have never imagined to have you on this podcast for a handful of times you've been on here you you between you and cove you guys have 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 been my most regular uh contributors on these podcasts so i really just appreciate you uh taking the time and uh and, and you know making yourself available man it, it does mean a lot and i appreciate you dropping no everything to I happen. told you, man. I told you, man. Any anytime, you know, you need to uh, not just podcast, anything, man. Reach out. Um, you're just one of those genuine dudes. You don't put on a front. You don't, you know. I think you deserve a lot more support than you get, you know. But, you know, you have a full time job. You're a teacher. Yeah. Your dad. Yeah. Your husband. So, you know, it, streaming is tough. Yeah. Whether you're doing it full time or part time, or if you're if you're streaming at all, it's tough. It um, is. You know, I've been doing it for over eight years now, which is, yeah. Very long time in the streaming yeah. world to still be around and to still, and I and I don't I don't like to brag because I'm just a guy I'm just a fucking I'm just a 42 year old guy that sits on the internet plays video games talks shit entertains people cracks jokes talks about you know I don't I don't pigeon my whole I don't pigeon yeah. I don't pigeonhole myself into one thing other than obviously I'm known for Madden yeah. but I don't look at myself as any as anything special you know a lot of people forget where they come from and they let they let numbers and money and everything like people change. I've been the same since yeah. day one. So yeah, absolutely, um, man. I won't, yeah, I, I will not compromise who I am for any amount of money. You know, I do have to do it full time right now while I'm looking yeah. for work, but uh, I'm not gonna, you're not going to see me put up goals to wear a dress <laughs> or I will not compromise <laughs> who I am as a human being for any amount of yeah. money. $20 is not $20 to me. 